St. Anthony of Padua. St. Anthony of Padua. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Day four, Mary joins herself to Jesus for our redemption. St. Augustine's prayer to the Holy Spirit. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my works too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love only what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me then, O Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. A reading from Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens a womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictates of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Messiah of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory for your people in Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very hour, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child all were awaiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Commentary Mary and Joseph faithfully adhere to the Jewish law and consecrate the boy to the Lord. The Holy Spirit again activates the mystery of Jesus as Simeon holds him and proclaims the presence of the light of the world and the glory of Israel. He foretells that the child will be opposed in order to reveal the thoughts of many hearts. Mary, he predicts, will be directly linked to the suffering of the Messiah. She will be pierced by a sword. By the prophecy of Simon, the Holy Spirit prepares his spouse to enter deeply into the redemptive process alongside her son. Reflection John's Gospel often uses individuals as types, that is, symbols of the whole groups or even of all human beings. In the dialogue with the mother of Jesus and the disciple who Jesus loved, John, makes the disciples stand in for the world and the church. By Jesus giving Mary to John, as his mother, she becomes the mother of the church and the entire world. As a daughter of Israel, Mary had the pain of seeing her homeland overrun by the Romans. As a child of God, she suffered from seeing her nation's leaders too concerned about external observances. After Jesus left home, she had the uncertainty of poverty and fear for her son's life. 
Then after seeing her son die shamefully and enjoying his resurrected presence for a mere 40 days, she witnessed the martyrdom of the early believers, the mystical body of which she was the mother. Yet she continued to press the work of evangelization, becoming the prime source of knowledge for the events of Jesus' life, keeping her his memory alive, strengthening the disciples, even though she was impatient to be homeward bound to possess what she had so long pondered. The words of St. Maximilian. Strictly speaking, the mission of the Milita of the Immaculata is the same as that of the Immaculata herself, as co-redemptrix. In fact, she desires to extend to all humanity the faults of the redemption affected by her son and to do all she can to win back Christ's heretics, schismatics, Freemasons, Jews, etc. The sole desire of the Immaculata is to lift the level of our spiritual life until it reaches the height of sanctity. She does not expect to bring about these goals of apostolic activity directly, Rather, she seeks to involve us in all of them. Consequently, the essential condition that every member of the Milita of the Immaculata should effectively realize is self-offering to the Immaculata as her own. We consecrate ourselves to the Immaculata by making use of any formula as, as long as we renounce our own wills and adhere to her orders, which are made known to us in the commandments of God and the Church in the duties of our state in life and in internal inspirations. This activity of the Immaculatas will be all more the effective, the more that we, for our part, seek to deepen our spiritual formation. Consecration to the Immaculata, therefore, implies the necessity of working for the perfection of ourselves and of our inclinations. Only when we are perfectly obedient to the Immaculata shall we become worthy instruments in her apostles apostolic hands. We shall be apostles by the example of our lives, apostles by offering others to help of our actions. Subtuum Presidium Prayer. We fly to thy patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. Miraculous Metal Prayer. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us that we would have recourse to you. And for all those who do not have recourse to you, especially the enemies of the church and all those recommended to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 